as I understand it, your work seems to focus on finding the humanity in characters that are somewhat morally ambiguous. And this can make for very moving and interesting television. But I wonder if you think that there's any downside to it, or to put it another way, do you think some things and maybe even some people are merely unforgivable? And if not, can that be a dangerous position to hold? And I think I ask this in part because of the current political climate. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are certain people unforgivable? Uh, no. I don't think so. Not even your old fraternity friend, the president? <laughs> not even my old fraternity friend, the president. Especially not him, who I find to be more of a genial boob than a moral menace. I think that the war in Iraq has ever so much more to do with the media's abdication of its moral responsibility than with the deficiencies of our president. I think that the media have infantilized the expectations of the audience because of the lack of some sort of transcendent informing vision. I believe that the surrogate existence that is provided by television has come to supplant the genuine emotional life of the populace. The reason that I have chosen not to do any more contemporary drama because the assault on the collective sensibility of 9-11 give the audience so much fear that the only way that they could be placated was with a television series which would be finished in three weeks. And the rationale for that war had nothing to do with weapons of mass destruction and everything to do with the habituation of the viewing public to the shaping of human experience in distorted forms for which the media is responsible. The first three weeks of the Iraq miniseries was received with enormous public approval. That was the triumph of American weaponry. And it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the disaffection with the Iraq war has nothing to do with what is going on with the Iraqi people and everything to do with the fact that that series is over. We wanted to be narcotized in our reaction to the assault on the World Trade Center. We got what we were looking for. Don't be bothering us anymore with the goddamn roadside bombs. Bring the boys home. Well, the boys were never coming home after three weeks. The dialogue that's going on about President Bush has nothing to do with President Bush and everything to do with the fact that he is the failed central character in an infantile drama which was being staged to narcotize the American public. And no matter who was in office, the so-called intelligentsia would be trivializing and criticizing him now, which is not to say that he's not a moron. I know better than anyone else. I spent a lot of time with him. You know, we're fraternity brothers. But that is not what's happening in America today. There's a different drama which is enacting itself, and it has to do with a failure to acknowledge the necessary moral and imaginative predicate in what has become an entirely virtual existence. People spend more than half their waking hours watching television. Just think about that for a second that has to shape the neural pathways. It creates an impatience, for example, with irresolution. That's why I won't do a, any more contemporary series, because that image is so indelibly imprinted on the American consciousness that we are prepared for a genocide. All of this bullshit about Iraq, let one more plane go into one more big building, and the American public will sign on to the extermination of everyone of the Muslim faith. I hope you're wrong about that. Oh, I hope I'm wrong too, Ali, but it'll happen like that. Do you remember your question? 